Hey folks, so I really want to get into uh, assembling that new Funny Playing DMG IPS kit that I have. Uh, but before I do that, I do have to take a few minutes to talk about the shells that I have uh, purchased for this mod specifically. Now, nine times out of ten, um, you know, and every other time so far except, except that one time, I guess, um, I have recommended just using the OEM shells. Uh, so, this DMG, I don't even remember what kit this is, I think it's an IPS kit, um, probably a V1 that I did the uh, fix on. I don't even remember, I'd have to put batteries in it to check it out. I also have this one, same thing, uh, except this has a glass play it loud lens on it. Um, same thing, IPS, uh, probably one of the RIPS kits. I believe these two are the same kits. One of them's V1, one of them's V2. Whatever. Um, then I did my Moon IPS in a Play It Loud console. Uh, but then there's these two. I did a build in the Funny Playing Shell, and looks like my cat's been sitting on it. He drools and sneezes on things. Um, it's neither here nor there, sorry. Uh, but anyway, I did a build in one of these retro modding shells, and uh, you know, I I had some things to say about the shell, but at the time all I had to compare it to was an OEM shell. And ultimately in the end, you know, I, I think it's I think it's a pretty darn good shell. Uh, but now that I have more shells to compare it to, like for instance the Kitsch Bent shell that I did, um, and I will criticize this shell, but I'm not going to criticize the damage that I did to it, because that very easily could have happened to any shell, not just this one. I Just, just because there's a moron with a lighter, you know, I, sh I shouldn't count that against the shell. But anyway, um, yeah. For every build that I've done, I've been happy with OEM shells, but as it turns out, stack of Game Boys aside, I'm running out of decent OEM Game Boys. Uh, <laughs> I have this one, and I do know this Game Boy works. Uh, maybe at some point we'll backlight it, try and fix this LCD, but, uh, well, backlight the original LCD, uh, but we'll probably save that for another time. But, I mean, just, just look at the color of this thing. It's practically my Play It Loud color. Um, this is the color that it's supposed to be. It's, uh, it's seen some, it's seen some shit, man. It's seen some better days, but the point of this video, I guess, uh, is just to discuss these new shells from Retro 6 here. Um, now, if you frequent the Game Boy Discord, as I do, you've probably noticed some sentiment, some less than positive sentiment towards Retro 6. And I'm going to try and leave as much bias as I can out of this video. Um, I will say I'm not a, I'm not a fan at all, uh, but we're going to try and judge these products on their own merit um, without bringing Retro 6 into it. Um, now that being said, I am going to mention a few things uh, because I think it's very relevant to my criticism of these shells, but you know that's that's a thing that we'll get into more as as we uh, as we move along. Now I'm going to I'm going to take a look at this video in two parts. Really, uh, this first part that I'm working on right now is just going to be my initial impression with the shells, uh, and then I'm going to pause do an actual build in one of these two shells, probably the blue one I'm feeling. And uh, then we'll reconvene in a week or two and I'll let you know my final thoughts. So this first part, I guess, is just gonna be my, my first impression here. So immediately out of the packaging, there are a few things that I noticed. And uh, these do come with uh, some buttons here, membranes, uh, just black plastic, black membrane, screws. Um, I'll. I'll go more into detail on this in the second half of my video and in the, um, the IPS kit install that I'm doing in a few. 
Uh, but it also comes with, da, 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 sorry, I set it aside. They also come with two glass lenses here, one for each of the shells. I just have a regular lens taped into this one because um, it's gonna help me when I'm working on uh, my next video here. Not too relevant to what I'm working on here. But um, first thoughts here. These are painted shells. You pop it open, you can see, you know, where it was sitting on a post here while it was sprayed, sitting on a post here while it was sprayed, so on and so forth. And these do have quite a significant texture to them, uh, especially if you if you look at the uh, unpainted part, you can see this is very smooth, glossy texture, whereas the painted part adds a significant uh, matte feeling to it. It's it's very reminiscent of Plasti Dip, except, you know, it's not, it's not coming off. You know, I'm, I'm really giving it what for with my fingernail, and if it were Plasti Dip, I would be scraping it off. But that's that's not happening here. Um, now that being said, there are quite a few issues with painted shells that I've never been a fan of. Uh, namely, this is going to wear. Uh, well. Probably not this one in particular because I know me and it's probably just going to go on a shelf, but I'm going to try to, you know, carry this around with me, use it for a couple weeks and see, you know, will it wear? Um, so I can, so, you know, I can try and comment on the durability because that I just, I can only speculate on it for now until I actually, you know, start using it and see how it holds up long term. But, um, first thing right off the hop there are just spots that didn't really get paint like you can see in this gap here there's that white that's just because there's no paint if we look at other gaps there's paint in there paint in there uh, it's a little light on the top here also it doesn't quite line up now maybe maybe that'll go away once I've got screws in it uh, but I know OEM shells fit together quite a bit better. Um, you don't have to have all the screws in there just to see the uh, just to see the fitment. Now this is a Game Boy Advance of course, but there's no there's no console in here. It's just an empty shell with all the buttons and the screen. But when everything's lined up, I said, when everything's lined up, there we go. You know, it just it just fits together. There's that gap that they manufactured into the design, and yes, this thing is disgusting, I know. I've been meaning to clean it, I just haven't. Um, but yeah, there's, there's that gap in there, but that's the engineered gap that Nintendo put in there because they knew they weren't gonna get perfect panel lines, so they exaggerate it, and it seems to hide any mistakes pretty well. Um, Retro 6 did the same sort of thing with their shells here. Um, that's that's what this gap is. They're, for the most part, just copying Nintendo. But, I mean, we look at this Nintendo OEM shell, and that gap is pretty consistent throughout the whole thing. Whereas on this one, you know, it's it's much more open at the top. And I can, I can squeeze it together, and yeah, I can already see once the screws are in, it's probably going to be a little bit better. But it's still, I'm still not going to get over these uh, gaps in paint. Um... And yeah, the inside of the battery cover, it's its not painted. That's not a bad thing, not necessarily. Um, that's kind of how OEMs do it. Uh, these things are built to certain tolerances, and so putting paint on these, uh, on these features on the edges there might interfere with the fit, because this is already pretty snug. I mean, once it's in there, it doesn't really move around too much. If we look at in OEM one, there's actually a lot more movement in there compared to this. Uh, it does still move around. It, I mean, it has to. There has to be tolerances, otherwise you wouldn't be able to insert and remove the battery cover. But, I don't know. I, I, I guess I'm just pointing this out. I'm not really complaining, and I'm not really praising it. I'm just, I'm just saying it's pretty tight, and had they painted it, it would have been even tighter. Um, I don't know how it's going to hold up long term. This is a completely new mold compared to some of the other shells, but like I said, it's not the first time you've seen a new mold. There's these two from Retro Modding and Kitsch Bent, respectively, uh, and then there's also those generic shells that you can get on Taobao and eBay that I actually don't have one of. I'll, I should probably pick one up to, to 
to uh, really give them what for, you know, compare them. But, eh, it's, I don't know, I, I, I want to dislike it. I'm just so biased against Retro 6, it's really hard for me to put that aside and take a look at these shells. I mean, I really want to like him. I really do. He's making all this cool stuff. At least on paper, it's all this cool stuff. Uh, but he's just such a tool on social media, especially if you try and, you know, if you don't, if you're not immediately falling for his propaganda, if you try and call him out on something that he fucked up, that he definitely fucked up, um, he just, he just sh shuts you down, you know, calls you a troll when you're just trying to get specifications on on something he made, you know, to support his claims. But again, not really the point of this video. Sorry, I keep uh, keep getting distracted, which leads me to another point here. Uh, I have a an OEM Game Boy Advance. Uh, this is this is from Nintendo. They they sold these like this. This is a rather rare model, but I figured it was the best example for what I wanted to show off. Battery cup, the battery compartment, not painted either. The the shell is just black, and they have the red sprayed over the black on the back, and then the blue sprayed over the black on the front. Uh, but as you can see, it's black underneath. So when the paint starts wearing off, as you can see right here, or with that big scratch right there, you see the black plastic underneath. And these ones are white underneath. I don't think that's going to look good when they start wearing. I mean. Maybe it'll be fine, but I, I, I think taking more account, taking taking that into account might have resulted in better um, long time long term life of the unit, I guess. Um, but I just I don't know. I I, I thought that was kind of weird that he opted for white plastic that he's painting. Um, but I guess now that I think about it, that kind of makes sense because it's cheaper to paint white plastic, uh, lighter colors as opposed to darker colors, because if you're painting a darker color, you have to use more paint to get the same color, or you have to put on a base coat that is lighter colored first and then put your color over it. Um, so, painting, so painting white plastic will result in a more vibrant color, and I do gotta admit, it, the paint does look really good. Um, I'm I'm really pleased with this. It's not quite the color I was hoping for, and as you can tell by the two colors I bought, you can probably guess kind of what I was going for, but, um, you know, it's it's not quite the same. I didn't think it would be, but, I don't know, I, I, I thought it might be fun to play with. Uh, so, let, I guess let me get to my last, the last thing I want to point out. Um, all the text on this shell, in the mold, is crooked like look at look at the volume here tell me that looks good right it's slanted downward at an angle um and i i have already taken pictures of this and i posted them on discord and i'll probably post them in the description of this video but volume is slanted downwards this way ext connector is slanted downwards that way um and they're both at completely different angles, and they're not like uh, complementary angles either. They're just different angles. Um, the text on the back, it's it's all right. I mean, it's not crooked or anything. Um, I do appreciate how difficult it is to get fine details in a mold like this, especially something that's going to be painted. So I'm I'm by no means criticizing the quality of the text. Um, on the back at least. If we move over to the other side, contrast looks perfectly fine to me, but the text underneath contrast is a total dog's breakfast there. On the right hand side it's just it's like moving up into the into the panel gap and it's moving out of the uh, allotted space, whereas on the right if you look above the U and use only uh, you can see that there's a little bit of space, whereas on the right, you know, 05 is running off. Like, what's what's up with that? What happened to the what happened to the mold that that happened? Uh, on and off. And again, I'm only looking at this because I started because I noticed volume, right? Volume is the one that 
clued me in. So once I noticed the volume, I started looking at all the other text and noticed that it is all crooked except for contrast. Uh, phones looks crooked to me. Uh, it's hard to say, but it looks like it's slanted downward at an angle that way. Uh, I'm not really sure what happened at the bottom here. It was a little bit weird. And then on and off, I don't know, it looks slanted up like that. But at this point, I'm, I'm nitpicking. If this were any other shell, I wouldn't really care. But the reason I'm nitpicking is uh, it, it goes back to my opinions on Retro 6. And like I said, he's a real tool on social media. Uh, but he advertises. I don't think he does anymore, um, especially after I made the mistake of calling him out on it. Um, but I don't think I was the one to do I'm not taking credit for that by all means, uh, by any means, rather. Uh, but it hasn't disappeared from his Game Boy Advanced shell yet. This is the sticker that he ships with the Game Boy Advance console. Retro 6 Game Boy Advance, hand restored to perfection. If you're gonna claim that your stuff is perfect, then you really need to work out all these small details, all right? I'm sure the shell is fine, right? I'm sure it's completely fine, but I would definitely not call it perfect. Um, oh, one more thing. I'm sorry, I forgot to point this out. And in, in some spots, there are these weird little smudges in the paint. I don't know, the, the light's kind of reflecting weird, and I'm sorry. Let me turn that on, maybe that'll help. Uh, but in this corner, there's that little smudge there, and right above the cart reader, I noticed there's a smudge right there. Uh, you'll probably have to take my word for it. I don't think my phone's focusing very well. Um, plus, oh, it's on this side, excuse me. I'm trying to look through the viewfinder. Um, and the weird thing is all of these issues are present on both shells. So there's that smudge again. And then if we look at the cart reader, it's right there where my index finger is, right where, right where my fingernail is. Um, but this is going to be a high wear area, so I suspect that'll wear down. Uh, same down here, and on this shell, yeah, it's crooked there too. And I even noticed uh, there's one more spot where the paint's a little light in this corner here. But it's, I mean, it's just all these little things. Like I really want to like it, but. The guy makes me so, so frustrated and to the point where I actually felt like I was doing something wrong by giving Handheld Legend money to buy these. I, I purchased both of these shells and another one for Game Boy Advance out of my own pocket and it, it took me a long time to reconcile that. But anyway, I think I've said all I need to say. Again, these are just my initial impressions. I am going to actually build a console into one of these two shells and, I don't know, just try it out and report back. Um, I did buy this one as the um, clean power, clean juice, or whatever the fuck it is, the battery mod ready. Uh, so it has a hole for USB-C port. I'm not going to be using that battery mod. I think it's a waste of money, but that is for another video but they didn't have pink in non-USB-C, and I wanted pink, so there we have it. But anyway, yeah, I think that's all I can say for now, so I'll be back. All right, guys, I think I'm back. Got this built up. I've had this built up for quite a while, actually. Um, I filmed that first half of this video on the 10th, and today is the 28th. So I think I've had sufficient time to really play with this. I actually did the build, the IPS build later on that same day. Um, so I've had this for a few weeks now. I've mostly put off filming this second half of the video um, because I wanted to complete the IPS install in this thing before I judged anything else, just in case there were some issues being caused by my temporary install. Um, and because Keenite Among You might have noticed that I'm not using the same buttons that it came with. I had to swap out my buttons. Um, I just didn't really want to take it apart multiple times if I, could if I could avoid it. I've only taken this thing apart three times, all right? Three times, and these middle screws are already stripped out. These screw posts, rather. 
the screws are fine. Look at that. There's a screw in there. I can't get it out. But it certainly doesn't tighten. If I try and pull it out, I mean, it just... I don't know what to do. I mean, I could take it apart, but the screw will still be stuck in the hole. Um, so, yeah. My criticisms after using this for a while, it's not great. Um, ultimately, this is a really nice shell. They're probably worth what they're going for, but I there, there's still a lot of issues with it. A lot of little stupid things. All right. First off, I'm going to rant about this again, but if he's going to call these shells perfect, you know, if he's going to say he only makes perfect products, if he's going to say that kind of bullshit, then there needs to be zero issues. I've run into several issues with this shell. Like I mentioned last time, you know, there's just straight up missing paint. Come on. Okay, fine. I guess we're not focusing. light help? Light does help. Okay. We'll do that light instead. That light looks better. Um, yeah. Like I said last time, there's just straight up missing paint in the gaps. I mean, I get it. Full coverage on an object like this is kind of difficult to achieve. Uh, but these are painted. They don't have to be painted. Um, again, the, the texture is actually really nice. I haven't had any issues whatsoever with this thing wearing down and I have been carrying it around with me to work for the last few weeks um, in fact I just realized earlier today that this screen wasn't even glued down it was just stuck in there from pressure fit and it it held up like a champ it's glued in there now but you know before uh, zero issues with the paint wearing there is a small chip in the bottom corner here probably can't see it because I just can't get my phone to focus on this object here. Right in there you can, okay yeah you can see it just a little bit. Small chip there where the white plastic is showing through. That's the only scar this thing has after carrying it around for a few weeks. Now granted I have been using it for less than a month. Um, I'm really not that hard on my portables especially because I rarely even use them as much as I've used this thing, but nonetheless, it is, uh, it does have batteries in it. What's going on here? There we go. I blame my batteries for that. I have that problem in, uh, other DMGs as well, not just the Retro 6 shell, but I mean the paint, I, I have, okay, you know what? Hang on. I do have one more issue with the paint. Let's talk about why I had to swap these buttons out. All right, these are the original buttons that it came with. And to be honest, the buttons are fantastic. The buttons are wonderful. Zero issues with any of the buttons on this shell. They are some of the best buttons that I've had the pleasure of using in a DMG. However, the tolerances on these buttons are a little bit too tight with the added paint. So they just, they, they stick if you use them in this shell. I had to swap them out for some other aftermarket buttons that I have that are a little bit looser as far as tolerances go, just so that I don't have my A button sticking down every time I try and use this shell. All right, it's kind of bullshit like that is why, um, come on, Luke, come on. I want to like this, I really do. You're putting out so much cool shit for the community. If it were anyone else, anyone else, I wouldn't have any problems with it. Uh, like, you're the only one that I know of who's putting out all these new shell molds. Um, okay, well, ha hang on. Ha let, let me roll that back. Retromodding also has their own shell molds. Kitch Bent also has their own shell molds. Yes. Um, neither of those kits are IPS right. Now, technically, this one wasn't for this particular kit either, but it was for the older rips IPS kits uh, and that's just fantastic I love what you're doing man I love it keep it up um, 
maybe update this for the funny playing kit. That'd be that'd be pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Just just throwing that out there. Uh, but yeah, you're doing all this stuff. You've got replacement power boards coming for DMG. Hopefully this time they're actually spec right and not just feeding a five volt system six volts so that flashcards don't work. Um, but I know you're updating it. It's a process. Uh, what else you got? You've got all the buttons. Um, oh, let's, let's talk about the UV printing. I know Luke, uh, uh, I know Retro 6 just bought a big expensive UV printer and they're offering custom UV printed shells for every model Game Boy except for the Pocket and the SP, I believe. Um, and maybe those are coming, I don't know. And that's just so cool. I mean, it's it's a little bit on the pricey side, but for custom UV printing, it's still super cheap. I just mean, it's a little bit of a tough pill to swallow when you're spending like 50, 60 bucks on a shell, but that's still really cheap for a custom UV printed shell. You're putting out all this cool shit, so just, just please, man, get it right and stop being such a dick. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated because... He, he just gets all this praise and he's such an absolute tool on social media and it doesn't make sense to me. There are problems with his stuff and everyone seems to ignore that. It's just, oh, Retro 6 this, Retro 6 that, Retro 6. Like, come on, guys. All right, I'm sorry. I'm clearly a little bit more upset than uh, I thought I was and this is about the shell, not about the not about Retro 6. So let me, uh, let me backtrack, talk about a few more things that I noticed with this shell. Um, it's kind of warped a little bit. If you look at the lens, it sticks up more in the middle than it does towards the edges. You can see there's actually a gap if I press down. Like the lens doesn't fully see, and of course my camera's not focusing, so you're not going to see it. Uh, I noticed that I can't get the lens to stick down because it's it's glass. I mean, I, it won't bend, but the shell itself does, so there's a gap there. I'm going to get dust in the screen. It's not going to be nice. Um, the tolerances for this lens are way too tight. There needs to be like another ten thousandth of an inch or something. Just, just a little bit. Just a little bit. We need to be able to squeeze the lens in without having to chip the paint off around the shell. Um, oh, my cat's up now. And last, I'm going to touch upon these. this text again. This text here. This text. All of this text on it. Alright. We don't need to imitate OEM. We don't need that. No one is going to look at the shell and confuse it for an OEM blue Game Boy. All right, they did not come in this color. There was not a single painted original Game Boy, not counting some of the UV printed art. I mean, obviously that's different. I mean, I mean the base color on any Game Boy was molded into the plastic. The, no one's going to confuse this for OEM. Why are you trying to constrain yourself with the OEM design, right? For Nintendo Game Boy, come on, this is such a joke. Just just leave it unbranded. It's not that it's not that hard to ask. It's not that big of an ask, I think. All right, look, I know why you're doing this for Nintendo Game Boy stuff. It's because you don't want to have to deal with um, trademark infringement, customs, any of that stuff. It's why you put Retro 6 on your Game Boy Advance shells. I get it. It's fine. Just leave it empty. Don't do this shit. This shit looks so dumb. It looks so bad. There is nothing wrong with just leaving it unbranded. This looks fantastic. Notice it doesn't say for Nintendo Game Boy. Notice it doesn't say Nintendo Game Boy. It just says nothing. We just have start select AB. It looks great. Same thing with the text on the back. There's nothing. This is just empty. It looks fantastic. What? Just... Why bother trying to get the text right when you can just remove it entirely and no one's going to complain? I mean, it's like I said, it's not like this is trying to fool someone into thinking it's OEM. That's never going to happen when you're shipping them in these colors, which 
I don't have a problem with, I'm just saying. Okay. I... I don't know. I'm, I, I have a lot of feelings on the subject. One more nitpick I gotta do. Retro modding's doing it, you aren't. Why don't we have link port covers? All right, that would be pretty cool. I'd like that. I mean, because this shell is painted, there's I have no chance in hell of getting a matching link port cover by making one. Um, but yeah, I. All right, so I'm sorry. That was that was 12 minutes of me ranting about Retro Six's bullshit and this shell's bullshit. Let's talk about some of the things that it did right. All right. This texture, I'm really liking it. This color, I love it. This is a wonderful color. I'm really happy with this color. If they sold more shells in this color, I would buy more shells in this color. I would like if they were black underneath the paint so that when it wears through, it's wearing to black instead of wearing to white. But we're talking about good things. All right. The buttons, like I said earlier, these are the best buttons I've ever had in a DMG, period. Aside from OEM, of course. Um, a lot of my OEM DMGs, though, they're in awful condition. They're just old junk models that I bought because they were old junk models and they were cheap. All right. But, you know, feel free to branch out. Kitch Bent did these silicone buttons, and these are, these are really cool. Do, do new things, you know? There's no reason you have to constrain yourself to the styling of the original DMG when you can just do your own thing, and that would be fantastic. All right. So, also, it's really, but this is, this is just really bugging me. I don't know why it's bugging me so much. It didn't bug me on the retro modding shell, but it bugs me here. I just have this empty square where there's nothing. Um, I know that on the original DMGs, there would be a serial number sticker that goes here, but why are we putting serials on things that are so obviously not original? There, there shouldn't be a serial number. Oh, I'm sorry. We we're talking about positive things. Um, yeah, I don't think I got anything else. Anyway, I'm under the impression that, well, actually, no, I'm not. I have zero reason to believe that these are being revised. I was thinking about the Game Boy Advance shell just now, not the DMG shell. So, I don't know. Um, actually, no, I'm sorry, that's wrong, because mine has these logos imprinted on the inside. I know that there is a new version coming that does not have any logos imprinted on the inside because this shares a mold with the clear version of the shell, which I guess, uh, you know, if you don't want to deal with a painted shell, you can get that clear one, and that would be fine too. Um, there's nothing wrong with logos, just don't put them in a stupid fucking spot. I mean, feel f look, there's plenty of space right there, there's plenty of space under the batteries. Pop them right there. There's nothing wrong with putting your name on the product. Just don't make it obnoxious. Anyway, I'm sorry, I keep, I keep trying to talk about good things and I keep ranting. So I just need to stop, I need to end this here. Um, TLDW. Is this worth buying? Should you buy one of these shells? All right. Well, that depends. There are certainly reasons for buying one of these shells. And if your OEM shell is in such a bad condition that there's really no salvaging it, which is the case for the Game Boy that I put in this case. Um, yeah, sure, why not? These are some of the best aftermarket DMG shells on the market right now. Um, no doubt. Yeah, there's some problems, but they're still they're still pretty good. It is what it is. Um, do I want them to improve? How? Oh, hell yes, absolutely. There's so much room for improvement in these. These are far from perfect, but are they good enough? Yeah, I think so. And again, I paid for this out of pocket. This wasn't given to me. This wasn't provided to me by anyone. I mean, the, the kit was, yes, but the shell, 
wasn't. I bought this shell, and this video is about this shell, not this kit. And you know what? The kit's pretty all right. Yeah, uh, or the shell's pretty all right. Yeah, there is a pretty big gap there in the contrast wheel, but speaking of, I'm sorry, one more, one more nitpick, one more little niggle. Why does it say contrast if this if this shell is intended for installing IPS kits. Why does it say contrast? That seems weird to me. I mean, you could just leave it blank, but... Okay, sorry. I'm done now. I, I gotta stop. I could go on all night about stupid bullshit with this kit, with Retro 6, with life. So, yeah, if you guys have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Um... If there's anything in particular you want me to try with this shell, I'm all ears. Uh, but otherwise, I think I'm just going to pop this in my drawer with my other modded DMGs. Um, and just admire it, because it is, it is a really good looking shell. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.